Hadi Al Mehdi took to the airwaves three times a week with his popular radio show, To Whomever Listens, ruthlessly criticizing the government. But some of those listening decided to silence him forever. Al Mehdi was at the forefront of anti government demonstrations last year. But despite being beaten up and detained by security forces, he refused to back down. Pressure on him ratched up last September. He posted to Facebook, Enough. I have been living in a state of terror for three days. Someone has been calling me to warn me of government raids and arrests of protesters. I will take part in the demonstrations. Hours later, he was shot dead in his apartment. His death remains a mystery. More than four months on, his killers still on the loose. His killing viewed by many as a warning. Stay silent or else. Hamzuz, a young blogger, does not feel safe enough to reveal his identity. He was beaten up twice and had his cameras confiscated during anti-government demonstrations. But after Al Mehdi's killing, he no longer attends the protests, preferring to blog anonymously instead. Before 2003, we know our enemies. We know what's the challenges. After 2003, we don't know what, who's our enemies. Maybe he's the policeman in the streets. He can kill you or maybe the government, or maybe any, any, anyone, because the guns everywhere. A spokesman called accusations linking the government to al-Mahdi's death a lie. Why would the government do this, the spokesman said. This was a cowardly act, a heinous crime. His death is still under investigation. Since the onset of the U.S.-led invasion, journalists have been the target of different insurgent groups. But now many accuse the government of also launching an active campaign against them. In a report last year, Human Rights Watch said, government officials, political party figures and militias may all be responsible for the violence intended to silence some and intimidate the rest. The government denies cracking down on freedom of expression and says upholding it is a priority. But many Iraqi journalists disagree. Hoda is not this woman's real name. Under Saddam Hussein, Hoda was tortured for two months, beaten up and electrocuted for writing an article critical of the government. She thought that with the dictator's fall, things would change, but she says they haven't. We have no free press, she laments. And after Al Mahdi's death, she also stopped attending the demonstrations. I post my writings online to get it off my chest, she says. I don't want to go to bed knowing that my people are dying, starving and being humiliated and knowing that I have a pen and I did not use it. This mother of three says she has no plans of stopping anytime soon. I know I might die any minute now, but I will continue to tell the truth, she says. I do all this so maybe our children and grandchildren can have the freedoms we did not have. Jamana Karache, CNN, Baghdad.